hi there this is Batel from Batel's Kitchen and today I am going to have a completely different video for you guys we're going to speak heart to heart and we're not going to be making a recipe today although I am extremely passionate about making recipes on a weekly basis but I thought that it would be a good idea to get to know each other a little bit more on a personal level and just share a little bit of my journey towards why I do what I do today and why am I not 100% fully plant-based. So going back to my childhood, I was born and raised in Israel to Moroccan parents. My father was born in Morocco in the city of Fez and he came to Israel when he was five years old. And my mom was born in Israel itself and her parents are from Iraq. So when my mom got married with my dad, uh, she had to learn how to make Moroccan food because if you know Moroccan people, they're very, very extremely passionate about their food and everything has to be spicy and very well seasoned and it has to be in a very specific way, method of cooking, it has to be colorful and very, very attractive and nothing can beat Moroccan food. I can totally agree on that one. So basically growing up in a Moroccan house, our household was very, very involved with food. We're also seven kids and I'm the second oldest and I was just born into the kitchen. As a child, I used to wake up to the most delicious smells of stews that were cooking low and slow throughout the night and I used to be my mom's right hand. Uh, when I was nine years old, I was actually helping my grandmother a lot. And this is how I actually discovered my passion and love for the kitchen. And she had a tremendous amount of patience for me, which I cannot even explain because today I have a daughter, she's seven years old, and you need so much patience to have your kids inside the kitchen. But because I realize how valuable it is and how many skills you get, I do let her hang out with me as much as possible. So, um, as I mentioned, I was extremely involved in the kitchen and I loved every part of um, being exposed to the feast and to the colors and to the flavors, to the background of this amazing cuisine. I really, really enjoyed and I learned that I have something in my hand that whenever I cook, I have not only joy, but also passion. I learned how to put my own twists and flavors and I loved to experiment and I loved to try new things. And this is how my family started to enjoy my very own flavors and my very own twists to the traditional food. And when I got married, I continued to make this kind of food and wherever I went, I was known for that person who would always have food in their bag and would always make something out of nothing. And I used to help everyone in the kitchen whenever I was hosted. And even in high school, my friends would laugh at me because my backpack was full of food. I would take the Friday night food in my backpack, packing it up into sandwiches and taking it to school for my 10 a.m. breakfast, whether it was meat, whether it was spicy, whether it was something that has nothing to do with breakfast whatsoever, I would eat it in the morning with no problem at all. So you can see that I was extremely passionate about food from a very, very young age. And I took it with me towards my marriage life and even college and everything that I did, food was also part of what I do. So my husband got to enjoy many of my things that I created, but none of them was vegan or plant-based or has to do with health whatsoever. Everything was just traditional food from Israel, which has to do also with fresh produce and fresh ingredients and a lot of greens, a lot of vegetables, a lot of garlic, a lot of lemon, just a lot of things that have to do with nature naturally because this is just part of the cuisine and the Israeli background. But the twist happened when I had my first baby. And I had twin babies in my first pregnancy. So this pregnancy was very, very interesting. And 
I was just looking forward to make my kids the food that I know and the tradition of the food that I grew up with. Things changed because one of my babies was in the NICU for over 30 days. He was a preemie, he was born really, really small, and I had to help him get released of this place in the hospital because I wanted him to come back home and grow and be connected to his twin brother. And uh, the only way to do it was through increasing my milk supply. And although this is not a milk supply video whatsoever, I have videos on that subject, you can check it out. Um, this is where my journey started because of my kids. So I had to make sure that I can feed my baby the healthiest milk, which is mother's milk. But I didn't know how. I knew all the regular food and um, that was the food that I knew. A lot of eggs, a lot of meat, a lot of chicken, a regular milk, cow's milk, dairy products. Although I was never big on dairy products, but I still consumed them. And none of these was ever, ever a trigger for me to think that my nutrition has to do with my milk supply. So I was lucky enough to be surrounded by amazing, amazing people in my life and friends. And one of the early days when my baby was in the NICU, a friend of mine came to me and she said, Batel, I'm going to make for you the most amazing smoothie that has many, many benefits in order to help you with milk production and this way your baby can come back home and you can uh, feed your baby and be healthier and stronger and more nourished and basically feel like a healthy mama. And she would come to my house and would make for me this healthy smoothie that had all those hemp seeds and almonds and, and flax seeds and all these things that were extremely new to me. I did not grow up eating them and if I did, they were only maybe a snack after a meal, salted and roasted and really delicious, but nothing raw and nothing that measured as a health benefit. It was just a snack. So this is basically where my journey has began and uh, I started to connect the dots and say to myself, wow, if these ingredients, these humble ingredients are helping me in, um, are helping me to get protein and healthy fats. So let's think about nutrition a little bit differently. And this is where I started to incorporate uh, Meatless Monday to my lifestyle and I was extremely, extremely excited and passionate about it. And I said to my husband, hey, let's just try one day a week to change our diet to something that has nothing to do with meat, chicken, fish, or eggs. Let's just try something that has to do with nature. And at the beginning, I didn't find it very, very challenging. I found it actually exciting because I love things that has to do with the kitchen and my brain couldn't stop working. I was like, okay, let's just see how things evolve. And I would start to write down things. What would I like to make this week and the following week? And by this time, my babies were four months old and um, I saw tremendous results with my milk supply. and. I was like, I am loving it. I'm loving the fact that almonds and hemp seeds are not only a snack, they're also a meal enhancers. They have amazing health benefits and I want to discover a little bit more towards that world. And we were extremely successful with Meatless Monday because the Israeli food have to do also with many things that don't have meat, like a lot of soups and a lot of rice and lentils and beans and things of that sort of nature. But at some point, my idea started to get uh, faded and I said, okay, what are we doing next? I wanna do more than just Meatless Monday. I wanna do more. And I was extremely, extremely, extremely passionate about it. I was just making burgers and patties and experimenting all day long in my kitchen, all day long. Regardless I was cooking, regardless I was in the kitchen, I'm the type of person who doesn't order in from a restaurant. I would stand and make breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever it takes, whether it was meat or chicken or vegan or vegetarian. I'm the type of person to cook homemade meals for my family. So I said to myself, okay, we're pretty okay with Meatless Monday. Let's expand it a little bit more and see what we can get. And slowly, 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 um, we started to eat more plant-based 
at one point I was experimenting more and more until I figured out a way how to combine food that doesn't have eggs, that doesn't have flour, that doesn't have breadcrumbs, doesn't have binders, and that is also gluten free. And every recipe that I made was not only delicious, but it didn't have this overpowering flavor of something that you're trying to bind. Like if you're trying to make a savory meal and you're adding a lot of flax seeds or chia seeds in order to bind this food, sometimes you would get the overwhelming flavor. Maybe it's a little bit bitter. Maybe the texture is not exactly 100% what you were looking for. So once I discovered that way, of binding food and creating meals that are extremely delicious and nutritious, I decided that, that I'm going to write a vegan cookbook, how to bind food without eggs and without all the starches that is also gluten-free. I thought at this time this is mind-blowing and something that is going to help so many people because vegans just evolved at that time. I'm talking about um, nine years ago. And today we are 2024. So, and I thought that many, many people can benefit from it. And I started to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and um, and write recipes and experiment on recipes and improve recipes and perfect recipes and make them again and again. And I would let my neighbors taste from them, and I would let my friends taste from them, and I would let my babies even snack on them and munch on them because they were so nutrient dense. They had everything that we need from a plant-based diet. They had so much protein and healthy fats and they had superfood ingredients and they had lots and tons of greens and anti-inflammatory properties. So finally, I decided that I'm writing this cookbook and I did not have a following back then. I did not even I was not even involved in, on Instagram or YouTube or maybe a little bit of Facebook. But regardless, I was so passionate about it that I said to myself, I am going to write this cookbook no matter what. It's going to be my baby, it's going to be my journey. And um, whoever is going to use it, it's just going to benefit. So it took me about three years to write this cookbook. And finally, on 2019, I published it. And that was the most amazing thing that I have ever done in my life. And this cookbook today is one of the most fascinating things that I share with the world because I know that many, many people who transition to the plant-based diet finding it extremely hard to find how to cook food that is tasty, that doesn't consume so much time in the kitchen, food that is satiating, doesn't keep you hungry, and food that is going to give you the nutrients and the protein and the fats that you need without extra carbs that you don't need. Not, a, not that I'm against carbs, I am a carb lover. I eat a lot of carbs. But what I'm trying to say is that we didn't put in there ingredients that are just fillers. We put in there ingredients that are very, very nourishing and satiating and benefiting to our bodies. So that was my cookbook journey. However, I was not eating chicken and meat for five years when I transitioned to the plant-based diet. I was very, very religious about it. I was completely okay with that. It was very hard at the beginning, but because I was always in the kitchen, I always found ways to satiate myself and, and find ways to make really delicious meals. But through my journey of having more kids, I'm a mom of five kids, with more pregnancies, I have noticed that my appetite changes and my cravings are changing. This is where I want to put on a very small side note, which is also very big, that we should never ever judge anyone for their journey and for their decisions of changing things throughout your journey because we are humans at the end of the day and our life evolves on a daily basis and we all have different stages in our lives and places in our lives and moments in our lives some of them are very happy some of them are extremely sad some of them are tragic some of them are are new some of them are new beginnings and whichever path you are you are the one who is going through this journey and no one 
can be in your shoes and therefore nobody can actually judge you for the decisions that you make or have made at that time. So I was going through more pregnancies and my cravings have changed and I started to crave more meat and more chicken and maybe fish on a Friday night. And I come from a Moroccan house and fish is extremely, like it's a signature dish for us. It is extremely important. It, it is extremely delicious. In many years I didn't make fish for Friday night but at one point I started to feel completely deprived and I was not happy anymore. Although I felt that I'm doing the right thing with eating more plant-based and I'm eating more things that are from nature and, I'm more, and more things that are less harming to our bodies and to the planet and to the world and things that have all these health benefits. But I started to think about my soul as well and my very own inner voice which was telling me, Batel, if you're craving this chicken, eat it. Or if you're craving this meat and you're at a restaurant, whatever, just eat it. You're human and you're allowed to and you're also pregnant and you're also going through this path, which it is better to listen to yourself. And I would never forget this stage when I was following a lot of people on YouTube that were also vegan and plant-based and they were promoting it like hardcore. And one day, uh, one of them, I'm not going to mention the name because many of you know this person. Uh, she was known to be, she was known to be vegan, 100%. And one day she was found in a different place in the world uh, on a trip that many, many people knew her. She had millions of followers and they noticed that she was sitting at a restaurant and eating food that was not vegan. And soon enough, the shame that she was going through, the shame that they made on her on YouTube and social media was one of the, one of the most extreme things that I've ever noticed in my life. She was judged to the core of what she was doing by eating food that was not plant-based while she was promoting on her YouTube food that is strictly vegan and I felt so bad for her I felt so so bad for her and I I followed her very very well in order to see how she evolves from this tragedy of um, this tragedy of selling one thing to her crowd while living a different lifestyle behind the screens and behind the scene. And one day I saw a video that she mentioned that she was saying that she has to that she had to gather so much strength in order to say the words that she's going to say. And one of them was that she would never ever label herself again as a vegan or as a person who do or eats this and that because she's not defined by these foods that she's putting in her body, not anymore. So that was a tremendous lesson for me as a person who loves food so, so much. Food is my life, is my joy. And that gave me so many tools how to to expose myself to the world and um, not to give myself a label to define myself as a person who eats strictly vegan or plant-based because I don't I just don't and I don't need to give this excuse to anyone out there it is my life it is my journey it is my body and nobody can take those steps from me only me so when I used to go to weddings or to restaurants or to France when we were invited and I had more kids and more kids, I have five kids at this stage, I was open to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. And this is where the balance came. I would cook for my family six days a week, only vegan food. No eggs, no dairy, no meat, no chicken, no fish. And I was the most happiest person in the world knowing that I give my kids and my family and myself 
everything that we need in terms of nutrition. And when Friday came and Shabbat came, I would cook all the regular food that I grew up eating as a child. I would cook chicken, meat, fish, um, all the things that made me happy as a child and all the things that I want to make my kids happy as they grow into this childhood. I want to create those memories for them without restrictions. I want them to know that food is a choice and I want to teach them how to make better choices by being a living example that we're not strictly vegan or plant-based, but we do learn how to make healthier choices by eating more plants, more vegetables, more produce, more things that are nourishing our body and soul. This is where I am today, 2024. I eat 95% plant-based and I eat 5% whatever I want, whatever I want. And this is where the balance counts. So if you see on my channel food that is not vegan and not plant-based here and there, you would know that I do it out of passion. I do it out of joy. I do it because I feel like I want to share it with everybody. And this is my very own journey. I do feel like it is extremely important to be very, very knowledgeable when transitioning to the plant-based diet. There are many things that you need to know in order not to be deficient in many things that your body must have. I have to say that I did have the most amazing uh, experience on that and today I know that whoever is going to go plant-based or vegan has to do the homework. If you would like me to do a video about the must-haves of what do you need to know when transitioning to the plant-based diet, let me know and I will make a video on that one as well. Thank you guys for joining me today. I know it is not a typical video of a recipe video, but I just wanted us to get to know each other on a more on a more personal level and getting to know why I do what I do and why you see on this channel the food that you see. Thanks so much for watching. I really, really want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I am just starting my journey here on YouTube. I have always, always wanted to be here. And um, two years ago, I finally, finally decided that as a mom of five kids, I'm not going to be in places that are just going to waste my time. I want to have this family over here that is growing with me and evolving with me and learning who I am and understanding why I do what I do. So if you're here and you've come to this stage of video here with me, I want to thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the comments. Uh, it really means the world to me. So I will see you in the next video and um, we'll take it from there. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.